Yep, today ends where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Life has thrown this lady, Stacey Williams, more than a few curveballs, but she's managed to use what she has learned from her experiences to help herself to motivate herself but to motivate others as well and she's here to jumpstart our tuesday good morning good it's morning a girl power you tuesday and so you're in the right place because certainly with what you have gone through and what you have managed to rise above there is power in you stacy thank you um so this is your second publication because you did a journal before right so i did a journal so the, the memoir was first and the journal came second oh, so the journal was after yes and you're working on a third yes which is called Somebody's Fool. Somebody's Fool, which is a guide to helping people on their healing journey after exiting relationships and the trauma that they would have suffered in those relationships. Which you know a little bit about. Yeah, oh, yes. Which is in your book, Memoir of Keith is number 17. <laughs> Tell us about that title. All right, so I'm the 17th child for my father. Uh, my father was Keith Williams. 18 of us. So uh, Memoir of Keith is se number 17 is really just my life story. In short. Yeah, well, the, the, the book has it in long, but give us, the, give us the in short version. You've been through a bit. I have. Mm -hmm. I have. So, started from pretty much a relationship with an older gentleman. And out of that relationship, a child was born. Um, I had my child at age 17. I had my child in England. So, I had actually left Jamaica right after high school to actually go and be with this gentleman. Yes, this gentleman, <laughs> yes, let's call him that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so once my son came into the picture, you know, it was just full force for me because it then meant that I had somebody who was depending on me, so I had to be the best that I could be for him. But what I should highlight is the fact that once I got to England, you know, the, the dream I was sold, the life I was told to expect, that's not what, um, you know, mm -hmm. that's not what I was faced with mm -hmm. there. So it meant going into survival mode mm -hmm. in a foreign country where I had no family. Because you were at that point now, you were being emotionally, mentally, even physically abused. Mm -hmm. You were there without any status, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So survival was your only option. It was. How did you manage? So, you know, sometimes I look at it and I say, you know, my journey is part of God's plan for me. Oh, always. And uh, along the way, there were persons like strangers who came into my life and had an impact. So from the get go, they were there and they assisted me along the way. Mm -hmm. And I was grateful for that. But it got to the point where I sat and I said to myself, this is not life. You know, I, and I started thinking, you know, I went to school, I did well in school, you know, this is not it for me. And it was at that point I took the decision to actually return to Jamaica. It was a hard decision mm -hmm. because I thought about, you know, what people would say, me coming back, starting from scratch, not having anything, coming back with a child. And, uh, you know, all those thoughts weighed heavily on me, but at the end of the day, you know, I said to myself, I had to do what I, thought was necessary for myself and for my son at that mm -hmm. point and leaving England and returning home was just that. So Good I, decision. Oh yes. No regrets. No regrets. It's funny how we go through these situations and in contemplating what the next move is to do the best by us, we are so caught up with what other people think. Um, we were talking outside about, you know, the fact that there's a publication that did a story on you mm -hmm. and the labels we put on people, you know, we're talking about, actually talking about Simsoul. Oh, yes. And, and, and how the show proves that, you know, no matter your status in life, and that's what's usually shocking is that mm -hmm. people think you're all good because of who you are. Yes until they realize that we're all just human beings. And so when your story broke in the papers, mm -hmm. the comments you say shocked mm -hmm. you because you heard things like what? Um, what, kind of, what kind of stress and problems browning like she can have? I mean, she's a browning, so how can, you know, how can brownings have problems, right? <laughs> um, which, which is what motivates you to, to speak even more about yes. your story? Yes, because I want people to recognize that where I am now is not where I've always been. 
you know, um, just like everybody else, I had my fair share of struggles. I had trials, I had tribulations, you know, I had a heartache, I had pain, I had everything. And, you know, on top of that, I also, you know, <laughs> had the responsibility of being the only parent to a child. Because, you know, once I'd left that situation, then, you know, father somewhat left the child and, you know, I became a single parent. So I had that to also, um, you know, maneuver. I heard you say that you, you're not a place of, of peace, joy, and happiness. Oh, yes. um, there are people <laughs> watching now who are in the valley and they want to get to where you got to. You said you made a conscious decision that this is not life. Yes. So how did you build those bricks? or that bridge, to bridge that gap between that desolate place where you were and where you are now? So first and foremost, I had to work on my healing. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a task that a lot of us try to shy away from because it is a lot of work. And you know, after exiting my 10 year relationship, I stayed to myself for at least four years just figuring it out, you know, going through the motions and trying to find who I was. Because at that point in time, I was who somebody had always wanted me it to be to them. Yeah, I didn't know who I was. So it took me four years to do the introspection. And like I said, sometimes we're lazy, we don't want to put the work in, but it is very, you know, it's important for us to do that. And after I put that work in, then I started recognizing the importance of boundaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I became so self-aware that I was able to, you know, find my triggers. And I realized that even though I was trying to co-parent with my ex, he was a trigger for me. Goodbye. And I had to just cut off all communication um, with him. I, it, it wasn't something I was happy about because I, you know, I really wanted us to be civil and have a civil relationship for the sake okay. of the child. But mm -hmm. when I looked at how it was impacting me, then I said that, you know, I just had to just cut it off. So, you know, going through those motions, you know, I was able to find who I was. Yeah. You know, I got up in the mornings and I was no longer waiting for validation from anybody else to say you are this or you are that. You know, I became so self-aware that I knew who I was as an individual. You know, I looked in the mirror and I started loving everything that I saw there, faults and all. You know, I, I didn't sit there and start wondering, you know, whether it is that somebody has something that I would want or wanting to be like anybody else. But like I said, everything starts with you making a conscious de um, decision every day, you know, to try and be the best version of yourself. That is powerful, <laughs> Stacy Speaks. Um, folks, she has a t-shirt line affiliated with her brand. The book is called Memoir of Keith is Number 17. Her name is Stacy Williams. Where do we find the book? And the, the book merch? is available on Amazon mm -hmm. and it's also available in Sangster's bookstore. Okay. And as for the merch, it's available on my website, www.stacyspeaks.net. Keep speaking, girl. <laughs> Keep speaking, keep empowering. You are empowered. Keep speaking to help empower other people. God's plan, what is this? His say? timing. Is his timing. Yes. Okay. A word that we're leaving you with this morning. Thank you very much, Stacey. Appreciate you being here this morning. Love hearing these stories, you know, because it, it tells you that no matter what your situation, once you make a conscious decision that you're not doing it anymore and put in the work, yeah. Work is hard, but when you put in the work, just one day at a time, you'll get to the destination. Author and motivational speaker, Stacey Williams. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you for having me. More amazing women on the other side of the break. It's a girl powerful Tuesday, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>